Monday the 20th of June this year marks the first anniversary of our Synod 2020 gathering. If you were part of it, you'll remember the Zoom meeting, 500 people where we broke Zoom. So it seems an appropriate moment when I, Father Philip Inch, one of the Synod moderators, can share with you not only the fact that the pastoral plan has been written, it's been promulgated, and we're now implementing it. So I just want to share with you some of the things that have happened under those six areas. You remember, becoming a church that's called to be. So becoming a church that accompanies people through life. So this area of accompaniment is something that's that's taking root across many aspects of our dust and life. But we've had two very e exciting and fruitful gatherings. 130 people came together to explore what accompaniment means. And on the evening of the 20th of June, they're going to meet again uh, to, to, to see how we take that further. We've been able to work with the Proximity Project in a national conversation around accompaniment. An exciting aspect of this first area, accompanying people through life, is the whole area of how we walk with people in the journey of life. So one of the fruits of that has been the LGBTQ plus masses that are taking place. Another part of that is looking at the ethical investments and how the diocese responds to the ethical questions that arise about how we invest our money and maybe finally in this area to be able to announce the appointment of Sister Lynn Barron as the Archbishop's Delegate for Catholic Social Action. This is a wonderful response to the call of the Synod to make sure that those who feel on the margins, those who feel disenfranchised in any way from the life of the church feel very much part of our community. So Sister Lynn will hold that brief on behalf of the Archbishop she will also be a member of the new Archbishop's advisory body. I'll say a little bit more about that in a few moments. And hopefully, during this coming week, we're going to appoint a full-time worker who will be the coordinator for Catholic Social Action. We've had a round of um, applications and hopefully we can make an appointment to move this area forward. So there's a lot been happening. The second area of the Synod call was to be a church that honours the vocation of all the baptised. So we've made an appointment of a new training post in the Pastoral Development Department and that will enable us to focus afresh not just on what people are doing in parishes but helping them to live their baptismal vocation. Conversations are taking place around the new ministry of catechist and this is more complex than we might have imagined initially because we have to work nationally and internationally. And we've also begun to explore how we create joint formation programmes for lay people, priests and deacons so that from the very beginning of formation we're creating a collaborative partnership ministry hopefully a co-responsibility. The third area of the Synod was becoming a church where synodality is embedded. There's a number of very interesting developments in this area. The Council of Priests has been revised. There's a new metropolitan um, chapter of canons um, in order so that the Archbishop's Council can cease to be just a body of priests, but as I hinted before, from the 5th of June now becomes a body called the Archbishop's Advisory Council, where lay men and women can be part of it. Sister Lynn's appointment to that is the first of what hopefully will be many responding to the call of the Synod to hear the voice of women in the key decision-making points of our church. We're also exploring the idea of a council of deacons because there's a council of priests and hopefully there will be a diocesan synodal council but it's important to hear the voice of the deacons. Under this area of the synod we also have our beginning explorations of how we can work better ecumenically. 
the Anglican Diocese launching their Fit for Mission project enables us to connect with them very clearly and very helpfully on what they're doing and what we're doing. <clears throat> the fourth area, becoming a church that renews its organisational structures and administers its property to serve its mission is where maybe locally things are happening. So we've got new deaneries, everybody's part of a new deanery. We're setting up deanery synodal councils which are going to meet between now and the summer for their first meeting. Terms of reference for that have been issued. They're going to be asked to discuss and move forward the idea of families of parishes. Again, you can learn about that on the Dossison website. There's some information about that there. And we're looking to audit our properties, our buildings, our resources, so that it can be at the service of mission. The fifth area, <clears throat> excuse me, becoming a church where young people and young adults flourish. A lot of work has been spent trying to discover how can we best do this. So where the work has taken us is that very soon, hopefully, there will be an advert for a new post, a new youth work post, that will have a responsibility to look at how we're answering the, the needs of young people across the diocese, and then hopefully enable us to find new ways of responding to that. That's been a very complex, as you can imagine, piece of work to do, but it's just about to come to fruition. The final area is becoming a church that cares for its priests. A major piece of work has been done already in this area. Out of 106 diocesan priests, 104 have worked with <coughs> excuse me, 104 have worked with an external facilitator and participated in discussions. And the next phase of this happens next week when the priests will begin together to say, what do we best need? What do we most need to best serve our people, to serve ourselves so that we can be the best priests, the best people God is calling us to be. So you can see we haven't wasted 12 months. There's an awful lot has taken place and much more still is ongoing as the first diocese in this country to to go through a detailed synodal journey we've been able to advise other dioceses and they've been able to learn from our experience just as we learned from other places across the world archbishop malcolm was able to take our synod deliberations and the things outside the remit of our synod to the Vatican as promised. He handed them over to Cardinal Huilet, the Congregation of Bishops, handed them over to Cardinal Grech in the synod office. And so we've done, Archbishop Malcolm's done what he promised. And as well as that, we've been able to include all the things that were said by people in our synod and in response to the Vatican Synod have become part of our um, submission to the Vatican Synod of 2023. So I hope you can be as excited as I am about what we've done and that you can journey with us to the next steps of the implementation of our pastoral plan and of our Synod journey. <laughs>